Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. This is the Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Today, our guest is Mr. Randy Aaron Gantz. Very thrilled to have him today because he, just like I, recently ran for public office. I ran for state senate. He ran for house. Uh, house District 40, actually. So we're going to have a conversation today about campaigning in Hawaii what it takes, what's involved, the ups and the downs of it. So thank you for joining the show, Randy. Thank you. I appreciate you having me today. No, I, I, I look forward to this conversation. Yeah, it should be a good one. Uh, so, okay. So, uh, so tell us, first of all, a little bit about yourself. I like to start every show with a little bit about yourself and then what got you to run. Sure. Um, so I'm cresting on uh, 30 in a few years. I just turned 28. Um, uh, a young candidate for state house this past, uh, past year. Um, I was in the military, United States Air Force, for about six years. And I came to Hawaii to study uh, at HBU, Hawaii Pacific University, and I fell in love with Hawaii and made it my home. Um, I ended up uh, meeting a professor. His name is uh, Representative Matt Lopresti. He's a, a legislator here, and he was my professor at HBU. Um, and we, you know, really saw eye to eye on a lot of issues. Um, he liked some of the things I was writing in class. Um, I wrote a paper for him. So he offered me a job at the legislature. Um, so I got to work with him in the 2016 session, um, and I was just blown away. I mean, I was always a politically or civically involved individual. And then uh, working at the legislature, um, I saw there was a need in my district for uh, a, new, a new representative, someone that could really give the people the voice that they deserve. So um, I told him, he didn't, he didn't approach me, I told him, I said, hey, um, I'm going to run in the district that's next to you um, and the guy that's next to us that we work next to. So, <laughs> uh, And his reaction to that was? He said, hey, I mean, you're, you're your own person. You can do what you want. And, yeah. you know, you got my support. He, he enjoyed my campaign a lot. And uh, I was glad to have his support behind the, the whole effort we had. It was good. Yeah, Rep Lepresti has come on our show a couple of different times. And uh, so he's, he's always welcome back. He's a wealth of information and knowledge. He is, absolutely. I truly very, enjoy conversations. Very intelligent. Him, so. Very. Yeah, so, so okay. So, um, yeah, so you made Hawaii your home. Yeah, absolutely. Many of us do. Many of yeah. us do. So welcome. Thank you. I will welcome you as much as I can. Appreciate um, it. But okay, so what? We're, let, let's 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 talk about. I'm going to ask you a tough question. Okay. You ran as a Democrat. I did. And you ran against uh, one of the louder Republican voices that Correct. we have. Correct. Um, let's start by saying. Let's start by asking this question. What is it that makes you a Democrat? Well, I ran as a Democrat because uh, in my lifetime, uh, being a Democrat has always meant being for the people, being a voice for those that uh, maybe don't have a voice, maybe those that are, that are uh, less fortunate, uh, maybe some that have not historically had a voice. Um, that is including our uh, LGBT community, that's including um, our immigrant community, that's including uh, maybe those that just work full time and come home and take care of their kids every day and they don't have the opportunity to dive into politics or, or go down the legislature and testify or things of that nature. Uh, so for me, being a part of a, a, the de Democrats here in Hawaii is about giving those people the voice maybe that don't have the opportunity to normally. Okay, uh, trying to add a voice to the voice list. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so is there, is there one issue in particular? Or are there a few different issues? I know you mentioned LGBT. Right, um, right. What would you say for you? Um, I, I guess it begins with you. For right. you, what is the top couple issues that matter to you? Um, I, I would say probably number one is, is civil rights issues. Um, and that's, it goes across the board. I mean, we're talking LGBTQ, we're talking, uh, uh, again, immigrants, talking uh, across the board. And that really stemmed from my time in the service. Uh, my time in the service really opened my mind up to uh, the world in general. I mean, it was the first time I was able to travel overseas. It was the first time I was able to feel like a world citizen uh, and kind of look outside of our country and look around the globe and see where we stand uh, in this whole global perspective. So you're the epitome of that campaign from uh, a couple of generations ago, join the Navy and see the world right. kind of a thing. Right. You, you joined the Air Force and I, you saw absolutely. the world. Absolutely, I did. I saw the world and, and, and it, some would say at a very you know, pretentious time, we had a lot of conflicts going on. Yeah. Um, and for me, you know, I was born in Philadelphia um, in Delaware area and then getting out of that bubble and getting into the world spectrum um, it really changed my ideas on, on the world in general, and, and I wanted to help as much as I could and extend uh, kind of my compassion and, and that kind of voice. I mean, I've always had a, a 
played hockey growing up and I was always kind of the outspoken one on the team. I always tried to make changes with the coach, things like that. Same thing when I was in the service. And they tend not to like that so much in the service when you're so outspoken, but I stuck to my guns. So I really liked if you're going to be a leader, you're going to be a leader in my way. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I always advocated for my troops. You know, I, I was able to, to make it to a leadership position in the military and advocate for the guys underneath me that normally, you know, just came to the service and said, I'm just going to put my head down and shut up and do my job, which works when you're in the military. It does, but there are times where you need to stand up for yourself and say, you know, Maybe we should do things this way. Maybe we should do things that way. And that actually, you know, shows leadership qualities. It does. It does. And the military is not closed to that. It's just right. how you do it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, okay. it has to be okay. strategic. It has yeah. to be very strategic. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, all right. So we're going we're gonna to jump now more into the actual campaign stuff itself. I would like to really have a conversation about what, it, what it's really like to campaign in Hawaii. Um, it starts off with, okay, so you were saying, okay, you worked with uh, Rep. Lepresti in 2016, Correct. which ended in um, early May. Correct. When did you know you were going to run, and when did you file? Um, so I knew I was going, so I had it in my head that I wanted to run in 2018. That was okay. my uh, thought process through the, through the session. I said, you know what, this is something that I think I can get into, um, and I, I really admired Rep. Lepresti, what he was doing, 2018, it's on my mind. Um, and then um, there was actually one uh, big speech in the legislature from uh, the representative who represented me in my district, um, and it was against uh, Planned Parenthood. Um, and that was something that's close to my heart because I grew up uh, in a household with all women, my mother, my sister, um, and then we had an exchange student that lived there. I was the man of the house. Um, and when they needed health care, they needed things. We weren't, you know, the wealthiest, you know, uh, family on the block, but when they needed it, we would go them for help and they were extremely helpful and they they really uh, meant something to me so when I heard this defamation of this organization I said you know what someone needs to stand up to this guy um, and so I looked into the, uh, the elections in that district and who is traditionally ran against him and if there was ever a, a strong candidate that could take away uh, maybe some of the things that he had as he was a veteran as well so myself being a veteran I maybe thought I could neutralize reach out, that yeah. right reach out to the veteran community and, and things like that so at that moment I said you know what if I was going to do it in 2018, you know, it's better to, to get my feet wet and jump in there and get my name out there now. Um, it was actually interesting because I went to go, I went and filed, it was probably, I think it was like the first week of April. And then that next week, I had all of my, my materials and belongings stolen. Um, oh, no. And all my campaign materials. I was in town and uh, uh, there was a car accident. I went to help a car accident, people in, a, in an accident. I remember hearing about this. Right. That's and right. then I went to go help the family and I put my bag down. And was all my campaign materials, everything was in there and it got I taken. So yeah. it was a it kind of hit to the campaign. I had to redo everything. So yeah. we were kind of late to the game. I mean, we, we only had about three months to campaign for the primary. Uh, Which and, the hard part with that, so that everybody really understands right. that. Uh, the first time anybody runs, unless you come in uh, uh, with, a, with a name, uh, you're a celebrity or you've done something that has been newsworthy for some period of time, maybe you've been on the news, the biggest challenge is name recognition. Absolutely. People don't know who you are, Absolutely. they don't know what you're for, and they don't know why you're there. So that's the first initial hard part. So first of all, kudos to you for jumping in uh, you. with both feet and you going as well. for it. Well, you oh, as well. Thank you. Um, and then dealing with the, that 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 hard part. Mm -hmm. So okay, um, so early, uh, April. So I, again, sorry that you had your stuff stolen. I, yeah, I mean, it's it is probably it is. not connected, right? You, no, you don't, you not, don't assume it's connected in any Absolutely way. Absolutely not. Um, okay, so what? One of the first things that's needed is you need to begin building your support base. Absolutely. So tell us what you did. Um, so. My district is, is really interesting in, in House District 40. Uh, we have a, a, a good group of conservatives, uh, a good group of um, military members, and then you have uh, the Filipino district, and then you have kind of uh, the people who filtered in there because it's affordable housing now. Um, so there's really a large base of constituents, and then the current representative, he has uh, a small group of constituents that, he, that he's loyal to. Um, so, and unfortunately, um, it's in the past has been against maybe the LGBT community in our, in our neighborhood. So I reached out to the LGBT community and said, I've been a supporter of 
you know, this community my whole life. Even when I was in the service, when, when I was in, there was still don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. And that was kind of a pretentious issue when we were in it, and I was a big supporter for repealing it and allowing everyone to openly serve. Um, so I really tapped that market and said, hey, what can I do for you? I know you've been had, had a voice for a while. Um, is there a, what is the, uh, I guess, population within the district? Um, so it's changing. I mean, it's growing a lot. Um, I would say there's probably closer to mm, almost 25,000 now in that district, but only about 11,000 registered voters. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's typical. Typical, right? Yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a large community of, of um, LGBT there. Um, and there's a large community of working force there. And support. And support for that Family as well. support. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that was my main, is, my main issue was to reach out to them and give them a voice and say, you know, I'm here to advocate for you. You know, what, what can I do to, to kind of combat the, the divisive rhetoric that's on the other side? Mm -hmm. And how can I make you feel like your voice is being perpetuated at the legislature? Okay. So you, went, you reached out, okay. So LGBTQ, you went to them, right. um, and that makes certainly up against Bob McDermott, that makes a lot of sense as, as a first obvious choice to go to. Um, then you have, you, there are other groups of individuals. There's, there's other ways of trying to reach other people. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned you're a veteran. Absolutely. So you reached out to the veteran community there? I did. And, and how, did, how did that work? Um, it, it actually worked uh, really well, actually, and especially being a younger gentleman who's been in the current wars, um, kind of knowing how the lay of the land of, um, I guess, military and politics have been going in the past, you know, Afghanistan war, Operation Enduring Freedom, and then Operation Iraqi Freedom, the mm -hmm. Iraqi war. Um, I think lended a little bit more credibility um, to, I guess, my campaign in general. Yeah. They realized that I had some worldly experience. Um, and that I could relate to them, even if they were a conservative or they were uh, identified as an independent or a libertarian. They said, you know, you have that military experience. They, they kind of offer that respect and they say, you have a perception that they can give uh, you yeah. know, a certain voice to that community. Is there a, is there a large veteran or military population Absolutely. there as well? There is large veteran uh, military community and also government employee community. Okay. So people have left uh, the veteran or left the military now are veterans that work with the government now, either on Pearl Harbor or things like that. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So <laughs> pulling together the different sports, because that's one of the things you got to do. You got to yeah, figure out, okay, absolutely. Ooh. Now, did you reach out to other other electeds? Yeah, absolutely. So other elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I reached out to uh, the senator in that district, Senator Will Sparrow. Mm -hmm. um, I actually reached out to my opponent um, in the primary, uh, Rose Martinez. Um, she had ran in that district, uh, I believe this was a fourth time for that that seat. She ran for city council once or twice before. Um, so she's been there forever, and she's uh, a mainstay in the Filipino community there. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, uh, you know, offered her my, you know, good luck, say this is, you know, nothing not, nothing personal. I'm not coming here trying to take away your, your you know, yeah, the yeah, momentum yeah. she had, but I thought that after, you know, maybe four times running that district that it was good to have someone who was, uh, you know, just a different so idea, a different perspective, face, exactly, different in a fresh face. Yeah. And that was something that when I spoke to a lot of constituents, they were happy to see a new face. Someone who was going to kind of shake things up in the Ever Beach community. They have always seen the same candidates over and over. That's so. actually one of the biggest topics and one of the biggest challenges. And we'll go into that for a minute uh, as soon as we come back from our break. Sure. We'll take a little break here. So thank you for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, the Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. And thanks again to our guest, Mr. Randy Aaron Cox. See you in a minute. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha.
Aloha, thank you for coming back and joining us still uh, for Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. Uh, this is the Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. And once again, thank you to Mr. Randy Arangoth for joining us. We're talking about campaigns today. And we're talking about how to campaign in Hawaii. And Hawaii is perhaps one of the most different, most you know, peculiar uh, areas and locations and states to actually campaign in. Because there are things that we do here, things that are expected here, that are really not done in, uh, in any other state. Uh, some to some degree, but not really. So th that includes things such as door knocking, literally going out and knocking everyone's door, uh, going out and sign waving, standing on the side of the road with a sign waving at people. These things are not done other places. So let's talk a bit about that. So sure. the things, once you got your campaign going and you were rolling, right. you had to pull your committee together, you had to pull the different supporters together, you had to figure out fundraising. That's a whole right. other topic we can do a yeah. whole show on, really. Um, but okay, so you have all this going, you have all these moving pieces, right? Tell me about the process. Tell me about what, you know, your, your day to day and how you would schedule out when I do this and when I do that. And sure. so, so tell me about what you did as you were campaigning. Um, so about the first month was really for me was trial and error. Um, it was trying to figure out, I kind of knew the basics of what a campaign in Hawaii takes. Um, kind of, uh, I was a part of the Young Democrats of Hawaii and we had a kind of like a training session earlier that year. Oh, yeah. So right. I kind of understood what it took, but I didn't know how to implement it. And I was out of by myself. At that point, I didn't have a campaign manager or anyone to assist me. So it was trial and error. I'd wake up in the morning and I, and I would make some calls to, to some really close family friends and said, hey, I'm really trying to improve my community. If you could throw me, you know, 25 bucks, that would be great. Uh, so I can get some signs and get, get moving. And then I jump out there in the morning, uh, right around 6 a.m. when everyone's taken off to work. Um, and I would, you know, wave at them while they're going, going to work. And it felt really weird at first because it's something you're not accustomed to doing. Yeah. Um, and people are going to work Why they want to be happy. But I was really surprised. People in my district were pretty upbeat and happy in the mornings. Um, so what do they do? As, as you're standing there on whatever corner you're on, and right. there's different corners that you have to schedule yeah. daily and weekly right. and all that Absolutely. to make sure you're hitting as many corners as yeah. you can, right? Yeah. What do they do? What do the people do? Um, I liked, I'm a big shaka guy. I love the shaka, and that resonates a lot yeah. with people in Hawaii. So I'm, you know, I give a big, nice smile, and I give a shaka. And I've got a military service animal, so I took my dog out there with me, and you know, she kept me company. And people Excellent. always love seeing a dog out there hanging out, and she's yeah, always yeah. smiling. So Great. I always give them a nice big shaka as they drive by. And awesome. I usually get one back. Either way, and they'll uh, so they'll, they'll give you a shaka back. Yeah. They'll smile back. Sometimes right. they'll honk. Sometimes they'll honk. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. actually it'll be a string. So someone will right. honk, and all of a sudden. Other, then, other people's turn yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt kind of bad in the morning, so I mean, it's 6 a.m. and I'm like <laughs> next to the house, people are honking. I'm like, oh, yeah. should I be asking people to honk? I don't know. But they will honk whether you ask them right, or not. Exactly. Uh, and True. what what uh, in my experience, they they appreciate that you're there, right? Exactly. Whether they're going to vote for you or not. It, absolutely. And they I heard from um, from others saying that you know, sign waving is not going to win you a campaign, but it could lose you a campaign. If you because, don't do it. Because yeah. it, it, they want to see that you're out there working. They want to yeah. see that you're, you're doing your best yeah. to, to represent the community, and that's something that they can, yeah. you know, latch on to. And there's only so much you can do. I mean, you, right. depending on how much money you're able to, to raise, exactly. there's only so much you can do. So, so okay, um, so you went out, you also door knocked. Absolutely. Door okay. knocking was, so after sign waving, I'd go grab a cup of coffee and, and scarf down some eggs, and then I'd be at it. The, pretty much till the sundown, uh, to knocking doors and trying knocking to meet voters. Doors, um, and 50, I was, 60, 100 doors a day, right, 200 doors a I day. I was fortunate enough during that time, uh, it was the summer uh, and I was still in school, um, I was finishing up my degree, so I had time to do my online courses, you know, really late at night, but the rest of the day was all just knocking on people's doors and, and hoping to catch them, you know, if they're off work or yeah. uh, maybe some of the, uh, the kapuna that were home you know, during the day that I catch them and chat with them about issues in their community. So did you find that people were open and they would open their door and they would be ready to engage you? Or, or, or what, what do you say the percentages of openness versus not? It really depended on the area that I was knocking in. Um, and I, I figured that out pretty quickly. Certain areas were more susceptible to, to opening their doors and having a conversation, other ones were not. And then I had all the area near uh, James Campbell High School that a lot of those houses are fenced in, so I couldn't even get to the you door. Couldn't get to them. So yeah. um, I would holler. I'd you know go near the fence and you yeah. know Are scream they, hello, how's it going? Hello. You have time to talk. <laughs> and sometimes they would watch TV and look up and look at me and keep watching TV. 
Um, and every once in a while, I'd have a great conversation. Sometimes I'd be invited in for some food and, you know, have, have a drink, and, you know, yeah, yeah, get some soda yeah, or something I, that day. A lot of people offer water. Yeah, exactly, and some water. But a lot um, of people thought, and, uh, and Zuri actually just put this in my ear as well, but a lot of people, as I would knock on their doors as well, their first thought was, who, am I a Jehovah's Witness? Who am I? Right, yes, of course. What, what do I want? <laughs> right, right, right. And <laughs> Why are you knocking on my door and, you know what, I'm going to keep my kids away from you for a right. moment. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, until, sure. you, until you engage them. It's like, right. oh, no, hold on, I just let you know who I am a little right. bit. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I found actually, and I'm, I'm curious if you saw the same thing, once you would engage them a little bit, let them know, this is who I am and this is all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Then more doors would open, right? right? Absolutely. Like, oh, okay. Well, tell yeah. me more. Tell exactly. me more about. Okay, okay. Exactly. Well, what about this issue? What about that issue? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. You also would send out. You would send out direct mailers, right? Correct. Right. And you would try to get them to everybody, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you, mm -hmm. you target it based on the amount of money you have, and you kind of get it out, right? Right. Um, what other sorts of things did you do to try to reach people? Um, so besides the direct mailers. Um, well, actually, direct mailer was something that I, I had a strategy at first, and then it kind of fell apart. I was going to say, oh, I'm going to do everybody in the primary, I'm going to go to every door, I'm going to mark the ones that are likely voters and things like that. And after a while, you're going so fast, you have so much to do. And again, I was at it my own for the first while. I scrapped the plan and said, you know what? I'm new in this neighborhood, I'm going to blanket the entire district. Yep. You know, I've got a, a certain amount of money that I want to spend, so that first mailer is going to blanket the entire district. So I was able to hit all, I think it was... Uh, 11,000 voters, but around 8,000 doors uh, in my district, the first mailer. See, that's um, and it was something that identified me. Um, and then, again, with my service animal, uh, she was always with me. So some people latched on, oh, you're the guy with the dog. So I make sure to include that in my mailer. And then after walking around, going to Starbucks, you know, later that month, people would recognize me and come up and, and, and say hello. Um, I was the guy with the red hat that didn't say Make America Great Again. Right, right. I was the guy with the red hat that said volunteer. I was like, oh, you're that, oh, you're that guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I like that slogan better. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, okay, uh, so okay, now what about your usage of media, social media? Right, other so I actually hired, well, I wouldn't say hired, I, we put together a program for uh, college students who wanted to intern in my campaign. Yeah. Um, and we got on board uh, a gentleman who um, was going, he's actually at Harvard now, um, and this is his first year there, but he was my social media intern. He was able to, you know, compile all the events we did, put together a, a couple slideshows or, or nice pictures that he wanted to post, and I would give him a little excerpt to write, and he'd edit all my spelling mistakes <laughs> and, and post it for us, which was fantastic, because nowadays social media, it, it's a great way to reach people, but then again, a lot of voters are over the age of 70. There are limitations. Yeah. It's, a, it's a way to continue to grow some awareness. It isn't a way to definitively get a vote, though. Right, absolutely. Sometimes, yes. Yep. But it's, it's a way to say, it's another right. way to try to reach somebody. Absolutely. Because the, any good marketing campaign is all about how many touches you have, exactly. right? How many impressions you yes. have. So that means how many times your face and your name has gotten in front of somebody. Because right. again, it's that name recognition thing. Right. Oh, it's that person again with the dog. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got, I, you know what? I like dogs. I like him. Right, right. You know, and sometimes it can be as simple as that. I'm going to vote for him because I like his dog. Like, I, it could be simple as that. So, okay. Um, how about fundraisers? Did you run, had, did you have any fundraisers, particular um, events that were? I did. I did. Um, and this was actually, my first fundraiser was um, at a friend of mine, Larry's house. Um, and he was gracious enough to open his house to me. Um, so I didn't have any overhead costs for renting out a, a space or anything like that. And then uh, I invited people from the LGBT community. And I said, you know, this is your chance to, to you know, give me your concerns. And then... Uh, you know, I'm obviously going to need monetary support, and that's the thing that, that you know, we all want big money out of politics, right? We want yeah. it to see kind of like yeah. a publicly funded type across the board where everyone can meet those standards so that no one's where lopsided. Where it's not about money, it's about issues. Right. Where we Absolutely. actually are forced to sit down and say, hey, this is what I think. Right. So that was hard to kind of being able to make that first ask to a community saying, yeah. you know, uh, give me your money, right? Yeah. I mean, that in general is just hard to ask. Because the first question is why, right? Exactly. <laughs> why <are> you? <laughs> and you know, and what they really are trying to analyze what your end goal is, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah. and I think uh, Senator Schatz uh, this past after the election really summed it up well, as saying that nowadays people don't believe you when you go to their door sometimes, and that's yeah. kind of why we don't get the results that we we really really want or we we, we expect after we do all our analysis, is because. Yeah. How, long, how many times have they had politicians knock on their door, people who want to be politicians? Over and, and over and over again. Spiel. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, right. I want this. Hey, can I have some money? Then my, they get elected. my favorite one, and the thing that breaks my heart, actually, uh, every time I think about it, is I knock on doors, and I, and I went up to this one, this one woman, 
uh, walked up to her house. She was outside. I was like, hello, Auntie, how are you? Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. That's what I'm doing. She goes, oh, okay. And I let her know. I said, kind of some of the things I'm trying to do and all that. She said, you know what? That's wonderful. She said, you know what? I'm sorry right now. Um, I don't have any money on me. I just gave all of my money to my kids, and I don't have any cash. If you can come back next week, I'll give you some money. I was like, Auntie, I didn't come here to ask for money. Right, I came here right. to introduce myself exactly. and see how I can help you. Exactly. And you're, all, and you're trying to offer yeah. me. I don't give a it's a dollar. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's the sorts of thing. It's like, you know what? If you reach somebody and if they recognize, oh, you know what? I do believe you. If you mm -hmm. actually were able to, to reach them, it's that thing that I then feel responsible to them. Absolutely. Now, it's like, you know what? Now, now even more so. I have more energy mm -hmm. than I did a second ago because right. of that. So yeah. that, that's one of the wonderful things. It really is. I mean, and it, and it really humbles you a lot too. It does. You know, big time. I was always happy to talk to someone and they, they give me uh, something to, to go home and think about. And I would come back, come back and make sure I'd follow up with them and, and catch them again when they're home from work and just. Yeah, always, yeah cause, oh, you want some work done here, want some work done there. Want, okay, let me take right. a picture, let me do this and I'll follow up with you. Right. Can I get your email address? Yeah. Okay. And then you follow up with them. Right. And then when you follow up with them, like, oh, you actually followed up with me. Right, exactly. Well, yeah, I told you. Okay, you know, now, now, right. now, now they, you have my now vote. Now they get you. Now they get you. Oh, okay, you know, that matters. So, okay. So that's, you know, uh, you're also on neighborhood board, right? Um, so I actually there was an opening, but mm -hmm. I had school that exact Thursday night that every oh so couldn't yeah I okay, couldn't okay. do okay. it. And I was I was that's kind another of that's out. another way to reach out to people right. or just absolutely the key is not so much for me anyway. It's not so much how do I get people to know me as much as how do I get to know them them exactly. How do I learn what matters to them? So um, all right, so we're we're already at the end of this, and there's so many more things to go over. Wow. Um, we didn't talk about endorsements, and we didn't talk about candidate forums and oh, things wow. like that. There's yeah, a lot that can be dealt with. But um, of all the things you did, what would you say was the most effective? The most effective. The most effective thing that you did? I would say door knocking. Door knocking. Door knocking. I mean, I and that, agree. I think every candidate will probably mention the same thing unless they're running for a huge, huge position, yeah. governor, position, or something or like you that. Where you literally don't have, you right. can't you knock, can't on, knock on every right? door in the state. You need but people to do that for you. That face-to-face, right? -face, that one-on-one -on -one interaction yeah. with the voters yeah. um, and just yeah. the public in general and letting them know that you're you're not doing it for any other purpose but to serve yeah. um, and that really connects with people so. yeah 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 well thank you thank you for running thank um, you and you're gonna run again absolutely yes, yes. exactly because that's, that's the putting, most important thing we got that message from uh, senator shots as well saying right. if you didn't win run again exactly so we appreciate that we love that too so okay thank you for joining us mr randy aaron gantz and thank you for joining us and listening to this conversation. I hope there was something in here of value to you. I think there was some value to me. Um, and I hope you join us next week again. So thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, the Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and we will see you next week. Mahalo.